Mm. Hi there. God bless you all. Living Stones Church on the Internet. Sunday morning. So our faith is in Christ. And we trust and obey him. He leads us on. We listen and say, Lord, speak. And he speaks when we ask with a sincere heart. So we keep our hearts open, don't we, this morning to listen because we've been doing three messages from the Lord the last three weeks. And today is God's message of trust and obey. Or God's message to trust and obey. And trust and obedience are interlinked. Now, yesterday we saw a lady who was blind um, taking part in the park run. It was a, a five kilometer park run. And the lady in a park, in a park yes, in a park. <laughs> and the lady who was blind was attached by a short cord to another lady who could see the way ahead. I found myself thinking about the little potholes oh, yeah. that are so easy to go into, but you keep your eyes on them. And I was thinking how that blind lady had perfect trust in her guide and trusted her to take them round those little potholes and, and the, the little rough areas yeah. that exist there. Perfect trust in that lady. Yes, and we also, sometimes we have to obey when we cannot see ahead. Yes. And the Lord who is right beside us, and we have to remind ourselves of that because we could either let our anxious thoughts control us, which sometimes we, we do, don't we? Or we could let go and let God lead the way. Yes, and the Lord is a very good leader. <laughs> He's a good leader. Yeah. But are we good followers? That's the, that's the question. So we could worry ourselves into a frenzy, couldn't we? Or we could have trust in God and let his peace rule in our hearts. Yeah, that's a great scripture, isn't it there? Let the peace of Christ rule mm. in your hearts. And that is a good scripture because sometimes anxiety wants to rule. Yes, or frustration wants to rule or maybe even anger wants to rule or worry wants to rule now the phrase rule in your hearts it means in the greek to govern in your heart or to sit as an umpire or, or a referee to preside and have the final say so we let the peace of christ have the final say it's not saying that we won't feel some frustration, etc., and worry, but we don't let that frustration be the deciding factor. Right, so it's a little bit like driving a car when someone else is a backseat driver. Yeah. Um, many people know that situation, but it's a driver who makes that final choice, that final decision. Yes, and the word rule in Greek is it was commonly used as a reference to the games the Olympic Games and it means to be the director the arbiter of the public games to preside over them and preserve order and to distribute the prizes to the winners ah so the peace of Christ then rules above all these things that clamor our Attention. That's true, isn't it? Our yeah. Attention, yes. Yeah, they clamour for our attention, mm. but we let the peace of Christ be in the driving seat. Yes. Praise God. That's important for us to remember, isn't it? Now, in Mark chapter 10, a blind man named Bartimaeus sat beside the road as he normally did when he suddenly heard a commotion. There seemed to be a crowd coming. So he asked around and discovered that it was a crowd of people who were following Jesus. And they were heading his way. Yes, and Bartimaeus, he had no sight at all. And he could have felt rather threatened and he could have felt anxious and fearful. 
that the crowd might even trample on him. True. Uh, he could have felt concerned. Um, he, would, he would go unnoticed um, yeah. and overlooked. That's so true. But instead, he focused on what he could see with his heart rather than what he was unable to see with his eyes. And he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Now, some people in the crowd <laughs> said, shut up. Oh, dear. But that only served to spur him on. And he continued to shout. Son of David, have mercy on me. Now, his shouting reached the ears of Jesus. Yes. And let's be sure that if our cries reach the ears of Jesus, then he will reach our his heart also. Good point, Jeannie. I see what you're saying there. Yeah, it will go, you know, the, it will reach if, the Lord's heart if, if he hears us. If our cries yeah. reach his ears, they will reach his heart too. Yes. Good point. So Jesus stood still and said to the people around him, Call him. And the Bible says that Bartimaeus, he threw aside his coat and he jumped and he headed straight towards Jesus. And I just love that, that the blind man, he threw aside ev everything that might hinder his running and he jumped up all on his own and he blindly ran to Jesus. He ran ahead by faith, not by sight. Because he had no sight. Exactly, yeah. So he was unafraid of falling or bumping into people or things simply because he heard Jesus' voice and knew that he had been called. Um, blind Bartimaeus' eyes called him, caused him to live without sight, but his heart allowed him to live by faith. Yeah. It's a good point, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and uh, of course he wasn't known as Blind Bartimaeus for too long no. after that. So um, the small act of running blind to Jesus changed his life forever. And we've heard of that phrase, blind faith, mm. haven't we? Well, if our faith is in Jesus, it's not blind at all. And blind Bartimaeus cried out with a loud voice, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Be quiet. Many of the people yelled at him, but he only shouted louder, son of David, have mercy on me. And the people near him told him to shut up. So he shouted even louder. And something, it sort of, well, it awakened his heart He'd been touched by the heavenly fragrance of hope and now the intoxicating flavour of faith was in his heart. Let's notice that he proclaimed that Jesus was in fact the son of David. So that showed faith in Christ. Son of David, David the king. Yes. You are a son. You are his son. You are also a king. He recognized that in Jesus. And his faith in Christ means that he was healed. Yes. And faith is having that assurance in him. As we said, obedience and trust, they are linked. Let's say the blind Bartimaeus had listened to the crowd. Let's yeah. just say that. Yeah. <laughs> if they said, shut up. And, yeah. and he said, oh, I've got to be quiet. Oh, I'm annoying people. And let's say he was quiet and rather than shouting all the louder, then he would never have had peace in his heart. No, it would have been a different scenario, wouldn't it, really? So he, he would have always thought, I, I should have spoke up, I should have shouted. Of course. And that would have destroyed any peace that he would have had just listening to the crowd. So letting the peace of Christ rule for Bartimaeus meant crying out to Jesus. Yes, that's correct. And what about Saul? 
who became the Apostle Paul because a light from heaven shone on him. Yeah. And he was a Pharisee who had spent time, he would study the scriptures, yet he failed to see. And a voice from heaven spoke to him and this was Saul's response. Who are you, Lord? Yes, and all those years of reading the scriptures and he didn't even know who the Lord was. He was he was blind literally. He, was. he didn't know the Lord. No. And uh, and when he was actually blind for three days after he saw the light. Mm. Yet during this period of darkness, Paul, or Saul as he was then, could see more clearly than he had ever seen. Saul saw one fleeting glimpse of Christ in his glory and that was all it took. Now Hebrews tells us what faith is. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Yes, and faith has to be exercised. We hear stories of how people's faith has been stretched and this is how faith is exercised. I remember uh, a lady who had a goiter on her neck. I have mentioned this story before. And she went to the mirror every day saying, thank you, Lord, for healing me. And she did this every day for quite a while. And one morning she went to the mirror and the goiter had gone, God. completely gone. So she was exercising her faith. Now, what about in Genesis 15 when we read about Abraham and Sarah who had no children. Ah, yeah. The friendship between the Lord and Abraham had developed over time when the Lord first appeared to Abraham in the city of Ur, back in Mesopotamia. So their friendship had developed and Abraham now felt at liberty to be frank with the Lord. And we, we read, we get to a point where the, Abraham uses a new title for God that we've not heard him use before. And there seems to be a hint of pleading attached to it. And Abraham had recently met Melchizedek. And Melchizedek was a priest of the Most High God and he was very, very respectful in the way he addressed God. And Abraham noticed that. And a Abraham was familiar with Yahweh and, and when we are familiar with someone it's easy to be a little more informal which is fine unless there comes a right time to show respect and we fail to do so. So when um, the, the, the Lord uh, spoke to Abraham, Abraham then addressed God saying Lord Yahweh. Now this is the new phrase that the that Abraham used here. And the Hebrew word for Lord is Adonai. And so he's he's got this pleading tone, Lord, Yahweh. Recognizing that the Yahweh is the Lord. And Abraham goes on to say, What can you give me since I remain childless? So Abraham's been very frank here with the Lord. And Abraham continues, You have given me no children. Then God replies, Look up at the sky and count the stars, if indeed you can count them. Abraham believed the Lord and he credited it to him as righteousness. So this is an important story here of trust and obedience. And Abraham had been so worried that his servant Eliezer would inherit all that he had. But God told him that a son from his own body would be heir. Over the next few weeks, Sarai thought she may be able to take the matter one step forward by suggesting that Abraham used his body to produce one. And it was Mesopotamian 
custom allowed for a wife to give her handmaid to her husband as a surrogate mother. Sometimes we try to help God out when he doesn't need exactly, our help. <laughs> exactly, exactly, Jeannie, It's yes. so true, isn't it? And God's working behind the scenes there. Yes. Yeah. So we try and fulfil <laughs> fulfil it. Yeah. So Hagar, Sarah's maid, the Egyptian girl, found herself pregnant and got a little bit above herself. And he, Sarah, uh, uh, Sarai, uh, immediately spotted Hagar's changing attitude and blamed Abraham. And we can understand, can't we, you know, Sarah's annoyance. I mean, she had been married to Abraham for many years and she had no children to show for it. And then comes this Egyptian woman who probably only slept with Abraham, say a matter of weeks, and then she quickly finds herself with child. So Sarai then gives Hagar some serious grief. She did. So Hagar, the, even though she was pregnant, could see no way out but running away. So she heads south um, along a pathway known in the scriptures as the way to Shur. And it was the same way that she'd originally come into Canaan with Abraham and Sarah. She was an Egyptian, uh, one of the Egyptian people that Pharaoh had given to Abraham and Sarah. So she knew the route, um, but this time she had no large caravan with her of people and access to food and drink and help. She was on her own. And the way to Shur, it's a long way, it's about 150 miles long. And Hagar would have been trying to remember where the water locations were and had made her way 50 miles south of Beersheba when she actually found one. So Beersheba is the last town southwards in Canaan and she'd gone a, a further 50 miles yeah, further on. She would have needed water. So drink. altogether, she'd probably travelled about 70 miles at that point when an angel of the Lord mm. came looking for Hagar and found her by a water source. Now the angel probably had an appearance of a man, as often happened. But Hagar would have known that this was no ordinary man because... He addressed Hagar by her name and her position, not as Abraham's wife or mistress, but as Sarah's maid. Yes, but he did speak kindly to her. He, was, he spoke kindly because he was concerned for her, asking what she was doing. And Hagar told him that she was actually running away. Yeah, it looks like Abraham had been interceding maybe with the Lord yeah. or about the situation because the messenger from heaven told her to go back and submit. Hagar, trust and obey. The Lord has heard of your misery. So her reward when she went back and she had to be obedient to the angel's words would be a son. She would be bear a son named Ishmael, whose descendants would be too numerous to count. And God spoke directly through the angel, similar to the way he speaks through prophets. Yes, and Hagar, she replied by saying, you are the God that sees me. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't, we it's, may be blind, but the Lord sees. That's right. It's yeah. beautiful, isn't it? You are the God that sees me Amen. and sees you today. On her hasty escape from Mamre, where Abraham and Sarai were living, she must have felt rather desolate, as if no one cared, because she felt probably alone in the world. And so, therefore, it would have been contrast like, to her return to the journey of Mamre because she encountered someone beyond this material world and now she was be being filled with some hope. So as she went, as she was running away, she was full of despair. She must have but been. But on the way back, full of hope. Yeah. What a lovely story. Yeah. yeah. Trust and obey. That's, that's the key here, isn't it? Yes. She 
obeyed. It, she didn't want to go back to Sarai. No. But she did, and she trusted God. So Abraham was about six, uh, 86 years old when Ishmael was born. It had been 16 years, because he was 70 when he first left Ur. Okay. And then 11 years since he left Haran, because he stayed in Haran five years. So he seemed, and Sarai liked the location, he seemed to like it at Mamre, near Hebron. Some of you may have been there when you visited Israel. And he stayed there for the next few years, years in which the Lord was quiet and was not seen by Abraham. But Abraham was a new father. He got Ishmael to look after and to teach and play with, and that would have taken up Abraham's attention. But he must have wondered where the Lord was. And in fact, it was Abraham was 99 years old when he next saw the Lord. Yeah. But Yahweh reminded Abraham that the contract he'd made with him was still on course and that he'd greatly increase his numbers. Abraham was overwhelmed to see Yahweh once more. It had been over 15 years since the last time he'd spoken to the Lord face to face, which was shortly after Lot had left and that what happened at uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. So the, the Abraham was delighted to see the Lord here. Now, it's important because the Lord had been missing for a long time from Abraham's life. So the Lord said, The Lord appeared to Abraham and said to me, I said to, him, said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless. And we read that in Genesis 17 verse one. So that's what the Lord said. Yeah. So the time, this this time here, the Lord introduces Himself to Abraham as God Almighty, and tells him to walk before Him and be blameless. In other words, trust me, and don't try to take matters into your own hands. Trust and obey walk before me and be blameless yes when you think of adam he had listened to eve and now abram had listened to sarai and listening to god is what counts yes and i guess that at times we all take matters into our own hands don't we we do but trusting god is how we move forward in god's kingdom and that famous verse from Hebrews eleven six says, Without faith it is impossible to please him, for he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So Jesus also set the example here of obedience when he came to this earth to save mankind yes yeah, so we've seen some good examples of obedience haven't we we've seen you know the, the blind lady yeah. we saw blind and then Bartimaeus yeah. who was blind and called by yeah. Jesus then we saw Abraham Sarah and Hagar yes who had to trust and obey now let's look at Jesus for a moment because Jesus also set the example of obedience when he came to, to be among us although he was a son the scripture says he learned obedience from what he suffered and once made perfect he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him and was designated by God to be high priest in the order of Melchizedek that's Hebrews 5 verses 8 to 10. So the night before Jesus was crucified, Jesus prayed on the Mount of Olives after celebrating the Passover. And he said, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. And an angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him 
and being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground, Luke 22, 42 to 46. Yes, and here we see Jesus had perfect trust in his Father, which led to obedience in his own life. Yes, the Lord said, not my will. Mm. In other words, your will, yes, Father, God. be done. So let's notice that Jesus, unlike Abraham and Sarah, didn't try to take things into his own hands. Although he had opportunities to do so, Peter, he, yeah. he got his sword out when they yes. came. And the Lord, Jesus, could have thought, oh, Peter's here. The Lord sent Peter with his sword to rescue me. Yeah. But he didn't. And he kept the law of the Lord in his mind all the time. Peter, put away your sword. And also there was another opportunity to kind of get out of this situation for mm. Jesus because Pilate said, where do you come from? But Jesus gave him no answer. And so Pilate said, do you refuse to speak to me? Don't you realize I have power to either free you or to crucify you? Jesus answered, you would have no power over me if it were not given to you from above. So we see Jesus here accepting the Father's will, realizing that Pilate had put in place, he'd been put in place yeah. by God. Yes, and we don't always understand, do we, God's ways, but we have to have trust and obedience, knowing that God has the best for us. And I have mentioned this uh, little story before, but a friend of mine was wondering how he was going to pay for his bills and food for that particular month. So he prayed that God would provide. Well, the Lord did provide, not in the way that he thought or imagined, but the Lord somehow let his money stretch that whole month and he had enough. And we have to remember that the Lord is in control as we trust him and it says in John 14 21 whoever has my commands and obeys them he is the one who loves me he who loves me will be loved by my father and I too will love him and show him myself to him that's a beautiful verse, isn't, isn't it? it? Whoever has my commands and obeys yes, them. Yes, yes. So obedience is so important for us as God's children. Yeah, and I think of that verse, Paul, where it says about God's ways are higher than our ways. And they are, aren't they? We don't always see it at the time, but when we look back, we think, Oh, yeah, the Lord did answer that prayer. I mean, Abraham had that long wait, didn't he? And sometimes we have waits as well. But the Lord will answer as we trust and obey him. Amen. Mm. Amen. So we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, don't we? Yes. And the glory he sheds on our way. When we walk with the Lord in the light of His Word, what a glory He sheds on our way. with us still 
trust and obey. Yeah. Yes. Lord, we thank you that you reveal yourself to us in so many wonderful ways. And when you do, we ask, Lord, you'll give us the strength to obey. Lord, uh, we know we have an enemy who wants us to be disobedient to your good word. But we pray, as Paul said, that he was not disobedient to the heavenly vision and his eyes were opened. Lord, may we also not be disobedient to the times that you speak to us, to our, you speak to our hearts, Lord. You challenge us. You minister to us, Lord, and we pray that when we hear your voice, we will not quench your Holy Spirit, but that we will be obedient and trust in your good word, we pray. Help us all, we ask, Lord. Amen. And Lord, we pray for those who are trusting you today. Lord, whether it be for healing or for a need in their life, whatever it may be. Father, we pray that you'll keep them strong in you. That Lord, as they trust you, that they will obey you. And Lord, that they will see answers to their prayers. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you for joining us today for Living Stones Church on the Internet. And can I just say happy birthday to Janice Thompson. And it was Ray Smith's 70th 70, 70 right. birthday okay. yesterday. And trust Ray, you had a great day. And tonight, Paul, could you tell us a bit about what's going on on Zoom? Yes, yeah, Zoom at five o'clock. Please join us if you're able. We'd love to have you with us. And Dave... Horton, a man of the spirit, will be ministering to us. And he's talking about having a, 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 the right attitude. So that's important for us, isn't it? And w we will receive something from the Lord as we gather together on Zoom. And on Monday at 9 a.m. we have Deeper, an interview, and it's called Deeper with some deeper questions. And then tell us what's happening on Wednesday. Well, Wednesday, we have Jeannie doing a Bible study for us. Um, the last three weeks, we've had Lizzie, haven't we? Elizabeth Kingsman. Yes. And she's done some excellent Bible studies. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Lizzie. Yeah, on tough questions. And But this week, Jeannie will be taking us through the first part of the book of Nahum, another minor prophet. We've been looking at the Minor Prophets a little bit in previous Bible studies with Jeannie. So she's now going to take us on to Nahum. And on Friday, we have short, sharp and succinct. That's how you pronounce <laughs> it, isn't it? And that's part two with David Horton. I thought part one was really good. He, he had some really great things to say there. Yeah, it wasn't quite as succinct as we thought. We had to make it into two parts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah so um, okay. then next Sunday Paul tell us what's up next Sunday our next Sunday Phil Mitchell has asked us to do a, a few thoughts about living springs not living stones living springs so we'll be having a think about that and the Lord's already been ministering to us mm -hmm. about that so it's important that we listen to what the Lord says and follow trust and obey. Yeah. The Lord bless you all. Yeah, God bless this you. coming week and hope to see you on Zoom tonight at 5 p.m. God bless you. Okay. Bye God for bless. now. Bye. Bye.